Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of Knowing Service Now. Again, my name is Neil Laufenberg, and I will be your instructor for this episode. Uh, today, I want to cover, after last episode, uh, some additional details around filtering, and I want to talk about list customization. So, to dig right in, I will go back using the left nav type filter text and go to the Incidents application. And I'll look at all incidents again. So let's start with list customization. Uh, one of the most important questions I get about a list is if somebody wants to add some detail to the list or remove it to make it cleaner for themselves. Um, and usually people don't know where immediately to go to do that. And where that is done is on the little gear icon here called Personalize List. If you simply click on that, you have the ability to add in any of the columns that are available for these records to the list that you have in front of you. Now this customization is specific for you. Um, it will follow your user between all your future sessions unless you reset it, but it will not be visible by others. If you need the list modified to be visible in a way by others, that's something an administrator has to do. So for the interest of looking at list customization, let's add a few things here. So let's add the active check mark. Uh, let's add close code and close notes. Those would be common things that you may want to see in a list. And I hit OK. As you can see, those were added on the end. You can also change where they're added. If I hit the button again here, you can go move them up and down. So if I wanted to move active up to the top of the list, I can do that. And again, hit OK. Now the next question logically, of course, is while well, I've done this customization for an export or for some work that I'm doing, how do I get back to the default? Again, very simple. Go back into the little gear icon and click the check mark for reset columns to default and hit OK. And that will set you to default. One important thing to note is if this list uh, is changed by an, an administrator out from under you and you have a custom row set, you will not get those custom, excuse me, a custom column set, you will not get those custom columns until you reset your view. So that is how you add or remove columns to your view to personalize it for yourself. Um, lots of use cases there to make things easier to filter, to make things easier to sort, to do group buys, etc. We'll get into some of those topics in, in later episodes. The next thing I want to dig into is uh, some more detail on intermediate filtering. So we did a little filtering yesterday, or on the last episode, uh, with the right clicks and filter in, filter out, and some breadcrumb basics. Now, one of the things that's built in that most people see right away is this go to section at the top. And this go to section is very useful. Um, but it's more useful with a few tips and tricks. So one of the main things I always do when I'm using the go to section here is use the star. Now using a star basically makes this a contains query. And you'll see, see that here in a second. So let's say I want to look for category where the word base is in there. So we have da database. I know we're going to get some responses on that. So I hit that, and that you can see that turns it into category, category contains base in the breadcrumb trail, and I get everything that has a category of database. Now let's say I want to get everything that is for Joe employee. So if I go star Joe, again, contains Joe. Oop. Apologies there, I did that in a category on accident. Let me go to caller, contains Joe. And you can see I have all of Joe employees' tickets here. So very useful. Another useful item, I'll, let me switch back to category here to make this easy on myself, is the equal sign. So if you know exactly what you're looking for and you don't want to contain search, you want an equal search or an is search, you can type the equal sign and go type in a, uh, an item. So if I go, I want to see things where the category is hardware and run that. And there are all the tickets, the incidents in this case, that match on the category of hardware. It's very useful when you want to quickly search something, but it's not, uh, it doesn't, it's not a simple right clickable thing like the contains specifically is, is probably the most useful case for that. Um, another thing to note is it only preserves the last filter that you put in. So you can see I moved from category to color and back to category, and my breadcrumb trail only has in the detail around category that I, that I, that I last entered. So it's useful for quick filtering, but if you want to do more detailed filtering, again, you must go into the show hide filter section. 
Now I'm going to hit the little pin filter or the pin button here to keep this up. So that will that will keep the filter section up for uh, the remainder of my use in the system unless I turn it off. And again, it'll follow you between browsers. Um, it's always going to be pinned if you have it pinned here. It'll always be unpinned if you unpin it here. So. One of the first um, things that is really nice to understand that's not immediately apparent is that you can make distinct OR blocks of filters to bring different kinds of filter data together. Now that maybe sound a little complex, but seeing it I think will make it much easier. So if I hit OR here at the top, you can see it made a separate block in the middle here. So there's a top block that currently has category and the bottom one has nothing in it. So those are two separate OR filters that can be run on the incident table here because that's where we're at that will give us uh, separate filters but bring the data together into a single view. So let me show you an example. So if I say category is hardware and excuse me OR <laughs> OR the caller contains Joe. So this is the same filters that we ran before. I'm just doing them in two separate OR blocks. And I run that. And you can see it brought the details together for both. So I have all of the hardware and I also have all of Joe's tickets. Very useful if you want to filter on multiple things and bring them together that are unrelated. So uh, keep that in mind and keep, keep that handy for future use if, if it helps you for filtering. Um, one thing again to note is the OR block at the top, the add OR filter at the top is different than the OR that's next to the lines. If you do an OR here, that will do an OR in line in this block. So I want to do category is hardware or category is request and I run that. Again, it added in the request items in here as well. So very useful for running separate queries to bring data together into a single view. That ends our episode for today. Uh, please let me know if this was helpful to you or if you have any future topics that you would like me to cover. Um, or leave, feel free to leave comments below to give me some, uh, some tips on how to make this uh, program better for, for you guys out there. Thanks.